Hello and welcome back to another Q&A here on Stephen Vlog. Stephen, so soon? You say? Yes, because all of the January 2016 vlogs are now out, and that means it's time for a February 2016 Q&A. So we'll be doing questions and answers. That is what that acronym means, yes. We're going to be doing some questions and answers, so let's get started and waste no time. The first question is coming from Nick9N, and the question is, what happens once the vlog is cut up? Now to clarify, Nick did not ask that. Uh, Nick actually asked, uh, once you're at the point when you're caught up, would you consider doing music? But I changed his question because then we can... Make it all encompassing. Yes, what you said. Um, so you may have heard, but vlogs are catching up. Uh, I don't have a specific date at this time, like when they'll be caught up, because I don't know and I don't want you to hold me into anything. But it looks like it'll probably happen sometime in March. Hopefully. Don't know. Could be April, but I think it'll probably be March. Uh, when things are caught up, uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to work on because there's, like all of the time that I spend working on vlogs right now, on catching up vlogs, will be available. Obviously, I, I will still need to do one vlog a day, which is the way it used to be many years ago. Um, so I will do that. But all the extra time that I was working on vlogs is going to be spent in other places. The first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to work on some Steven Place stuff. I'm going to get a little bit further ahead in Assassin's Creed, a little bit further ahead in The Walking Dead. Um, first 20s. Do some extra first 20s. Uh, do a lot more Morning Mario because I'm doing them in the order you guys have submitted them. And spoilers, you guys have submitted a lot! Uh, so I want to get much, much further down that list. So I want to spend a good few weeks actually working on some additional content for Steven Plays. Uh, then I need to work on GTA Online because the heists need to come out. There are still two heists that need to come out, so there's going to be some time spent there. We've also recorded new GTA Online episodes, which is awesome. Like, we have new episodes that are recorded on PC, so those are going to start coming out as well. Um, I also want to do some extra stuff. Like, I want to do an updated, because there was a bunch of people that, in this Q&A, asked, or the last Q&A, asked questions about this. They said, will you consider doing um, a new video editing tutorial, or a new recording setup thing. Um, yes. Yes, I, I want to. Things have changed. Yes, things have changed drastically. The way I edit has changed. I actually went back and watched a video from 2012 of me editing, and I'm like, you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> like, there's just so much stuff that, I mean, I'm, I did fine in 2012, but my god, things have changed in four years, because now I'm just like, and back then, I was, and now it's like, no, Steven, you you don't need that mouse. Leave that mouse alone. Um, so things are things are are cha things have changed a lot. The recording setup has changed a ton. People still want to know about our audio stuff. We've never done that. So all of that is like additional content that I'd like to do. There'll be vlogs probably, but yeah. it's one of those things like I'm not going to take on a vlog where I try to show all this stuff off when I'm a month behind. That's dumb. So once I get caught up, I'll do it. But to answer your question about music, yes. I really want to do some music stuff, and I'm going to have some free time to work on that once vlogs are caught up. You have like this hierarchy of... of there, there's a list. Yeah. There's a list of, of things. I mean, if I'm trying to be responsible, there's a list of things that have to happen in a certain order. Um, but, you know, fingers crossed, they will. Uh, next question is from Bella Rosa uh, Matina, and she asks, will Mal get her own Patreon page? Um... We're not ruling it out. Yeah. Like we 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 don't want to say no and never, but for right now, no. Um, it doesn't. The reason we're not doing it is because there. I don't feel like there's any inherent value in having a Patreon page for her because there's nothing that she does, that like behind the scenes type stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at least that I can do currently. Yeah. And if it changes in the future, then sure. But in the meantime, anyone who is interested in supporting Mao. Um, and her channel, Mal Makes, and wants to support her through something like Patreon, should just support the one that we have already. And I know it's like mine, but it's not. It's not mine. It's it's ours. Our and, finances um, are all. They're all they're all the same. So if you if you support me in some way, you have supported Mal. Additionally, um, also for anyone who's over on Patreon, they already know because they got the exclusive video already. But the way we're going to be handling it for the future is that. Um, when I do these monthly videos, if you're not aware, on Patreon, um, we do a monthly video where we talk about, like, 
stuff coming up for the future. We also discuss um, project ideas with patrons and things like that, get, get feedback from them. One of the things that we're doing to incorporate Mal's channel is we show off what she's working on. So the fifth painting that doesn't come out until whenever? A week from... A week from this Saturday, but I don't know when this video is coming out. Yeah. So uh, the, the painting that comes out in the future, like Matt, that's on that video. So if you want to know what that is and you're a patron, then you go over there and watch that and then bam. Um, but as far as like having her own Patreon page, it could happen in the future if Maybe Mal's... we could combine it, but like have a separate reward or something? Something like that, or I mean, if, if, Mal, if Mal's channel ever changed enough where there was something going on that she felt that she could give two people to make it worth it, then that would be one thing. But if you're just watching, I mean, if you're watching right now and you're like, I really want to support Mal on Patreon, then you can just support our Patreon and that would be the exact same thing. Um, but no plans for the immediate future. A uh, question from another mage. What were some of your projects in RPG Maker, and did you ever show them to friends or release them to the public? Um, so you never used RPG Maker. No. Did you ever use any kind of game creation project stuff, or? No. E ever? I mean... No? Okay, no. that was just me. Um, so, whenever RPG Maker, whatever it was, MV, I think it was, came out, I, I was really super excited for it because I used it a lot when I was a kid, and that got uh, a few people, like another mage, wondering what I did with RPG Maker when I was younger. Um, I started using RPG Maker, I think, when I was in sixth grade, which is a million years ago. I would have been, I think it would have been like, what, 2001? Something like that? 2000? I don't know. So, somewhere around there. 2000? Yeah, 2000. Um, and the first one I ever used was RPG Maker 2000. Um, so I, I was playing around with that stuff. I got I got really familiar with it, and I grew to really enjoy it. Um, and as far as projects I made that were memorable, I never made a full game, but um, the two big projects that I ended up working on, there were some other projects, but the two main ones, uh, I made one where it was based on my, my class at school, and it was eighth grade, so that was a little bit later, so that was like 2003 or something. And the cool thing was how it started, it started, you're in the classroom, and the principal calls you over the loudspeaker and is like, attention misses whatever can you send a student to the office to help us with something so then at the, when the game starts you're controlling the teacher and all of the students that were in my eighth grade class are in the game and they're all playable so what happens is you actually get to choose who Which you character yeah so it was really neat because like at the beginning of the game you could play whoever you wanted to play so it wasn't like you were shoehorned into doing something and um, I think maybe the dialogue was different depending on who you had, or at least that was planned, I don't know. Um, but the cool thing was I actually took that to school and I installed it on all the school computers without asking. And uh, that was what people did after keyboard class. We would have keyboard class and then when people were, were done with their assignments, they would boot up my game and play the game. And because everyone was in the class, like it was in the game, they could play as themselves. So oh, that's what everyone that's what everyone did. And the it you got a second party member really quick. Also, sorry, I should mention the storyline because this is coming straight up like an eighth grader's mind. Um, you go to the you go to the office, and I forget exactly what happened, but I, there's like a portal to hell that's been ripped open. And there's like monsters attacking the the people the, the office workers. So they want a student to come down. Yeah. Once again, this doesn't make any sense, but it's great. So you come down and you have to like fight monsters, and then you talk to the principal, and the principal's like, um, things get really weird. She's like, you need to go up and get another student because you're gonna need two of you. Because that was my way of making sure you had a second party member. And it's like you sh you have to go out into the city because Bill Clinton. Something, ugh, something with Bill Clinton. Like, we need Bill Clinton's help. I'm not even making this up. That's the that's the game. And you have to go into the city, and there's a restaurant, and it's like five floors, and you have to fight your way to the top. And Bill Clinton is eating on the roof of the restaurant, and you have to talk to him, and he gives you like this, like the music changes, is like, and it tells you about the, this crazy adventure. But that's all the further I think the game ever got. I think you leave shortly after and there was a part in the game that was like a secret strip club and you unlocked it by pressing enter 500 times. It was it was a strip club, but it was really just like 
like a, 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 a woman sprite standing next to a pole doing this. So that, <laughs> that was, um, that was a hoot, by the way. Everyone, I everyone know, loved that. I bet. Uh, especially when the keyboard teacher found it. And he was, a, he was a cool guy. He was like, I like what you did. That was funny. And I was like, oh God, I'm in trouble. But I wasn't in trouble. Um, yeah, I have that, I think, somewhere on a disc. I should really see if I can get that installed somewhere. on, a, on like Windows and see if I can get that running. The other one, um, I hate to hog all the time on this question, but <laughs> these games are... Now that I'm thinking about how ridiculous they are, they really are crazy. Uh, the other one was uh, simply called A Guy Named Jack, and I recently had a conversation with someone about this, and when I described the game, they said, that's just Samurai Jack. And I was like, what's Samurai Jack? And they're like, it's a, it's a cartoon that was on Cartoon Network like 15 years ago. I know of it, but... And I'm like, wait, really? And they're like, yeah. So I don't remember, but apparently I was a fan of this show and I ended up kind of recreate, like I don't think it was verbatim, but a lot of the events were the same. You, are, you actually play as, the, the name of the game is a guy named Jack and you play as Jack and he gets sent to the past, I think. And then he has to, I just remember I made it excruciatingly difficult. There's also, um, there was another game, uh, just to touch on it quick, there's another game that w I recreated the entire neighborhood where my parents live, mm -hmm. um, and all of the kids that live there, like William, he's yeah. in the game, um, and you go and you go to like a factory and fight. But the thing is, I don't have all of the stuff I did because it was on a computer and the computer like either doesn't exist anymore or whatever, but some of the stuff I did save. I need to get a hold of that stuff, man. That would be... Sorry for taking so long, but I hope everyone got a, a really weird glimpse into the, the mind of 8th grade Steven, who made a game where demons break out of hell and are killing people in the office and you have got to save them, but you need Bill Clinton's help. And I really hope that someday I can find that, get it installed, and bring it to Steven Plays, because I'm sure it's amazing. Anyway, on to, uh, on to a question we can both answer. Diego Herrera asks, when did you realize you loved each other? Yesterday. Ooh. <laughs> I've just been kind of winging it up to this point. I figured it'd probably hit me sometime. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't pledge myself to you for... <laughs> <laughs> Do you promise to love each other? Well, I promise to figure it out soon. <laughs> Good enough. Sign the document. Um, the... I don't know. Why don't you answer it? Do you remember the first time you told me you loved me? Yes. Do you remember what came out that day? Smash Brothers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, the day Smash came out. It was the day that uh, Smash Brothers Brawl came out because you were with Stephanie we and you were getting on a bus... To, to the one GameStop in town, which was really far away. The, ga the day it came out, you and Stephanie... Because Stephanie was her college roommate. Um, you guys went to... Sorry, just to prevent any confusion. Stephanie was her college roommate, Mallory switched colleges, and then Haley was her college roommate. That's why, if yeah. anyone's like, no, Haley was it, that's that's why. Yeah, Steph was my college roommate uh, freshman, sophomore year. So you went with Steph... At the one bus in the town. ...to GameStop, and I remember yeah. I called you and you were on your way, and I ended the phone call with, I love you. Yeah. I think you said I love you too. Yeah. Just kind of... You shocked me. I'm sorry. Because it was only like... Yeah, it was it was quick. It was like two weeks. But yeah. like, that's that the, that story is different than this question. I this, know. This question is when did you realize you loved each other? Not when you used the word love. Because I know that different people feel differently about that. Because some people are really hardcore like, that is a very big word and I use that when I feel it and it's like, you know, some people save it for a long, sometimes yeah. a long time into the relationship and that was not me. So no. I was two weeks in and I was like, I love this person. I love you. So that's that part of it. But as far as like... Actually yeah, knowing it, it? Yeah. Was there a point that you felt where it was like, yeah, I actually, I'm not just puppy dog glove with this person I actually I don't know because sometimes it's still like puppy dog love <laughs> mine's gone it's, it's, no no I know <laughs> um, I actually I actually don't know how to answer this question I was kind of hoping you did because you you picked uh, we both picked the question but like I thought that you had a better answer <laughs> I had than a good I did answer. 
Um, Not necessarily. Because to be honest, like there wasn't really a specific point that I realized. It was just. I mean, there's been times where it, it's really hit me and be like. Yeah, Stephen. but there wasn't a. There, it was just a very, very gradual progression. Mm-hmm. I think it was obviously you know when love starts. I, I'd say for most people, when love starts, it's a very puppy dog. This person is the best Over thing the ever. Moon. Yeah, wow, they're the best thing, and then you realize they're not. They're, but they're close. Um, but I, I think that's how a lot of it starts. But it, it's a very gradual thing. It's not like one day you're like, boom, I'm out of puppy dog love. And I just, oh, I care very deeply for this person. It's just a very gradual thing. Yeah, I think part of that also is time. Well, yeah. That deep. Yeah. And and the thing is, like, it's, it's really weird. But yeah, I look back on on us and our, our time together and, and things like that and um, it, it sounds bad to say it like this but I'll say it like this because I clarified beforehand uh, sometimes I'm like man I thought I loved you but now I actually love you yeah I think that a lot you know too. you know what I mean like I look back on on when we had been dating for a year and I'm sure in that moment I was like man I really love this person and now having been with you for as of this month eight years eight years um, I, I look back on it and I'm like, no, 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 now, now I, I mean, I loved you, but like the person seven years ago could not even fathom that kind of relationship yeah. that we have now. It's, it's just a different feeling. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's sweet. It's very sweet. Bad question. Bad, bad Diego. Bad Diego. <laughs> We're going to move on. Um, next question is not as sweet. Lopsided Pasta asked... <laughs> Do you guys trade or invest in stocks? Um, we we have some investments now, which is good. Yeah. We've managed to to take care I of mean, that. I mean, I've had a mutual fund. It's a mutual fund, I think. Yeah, forever. Um, but I've recently like taken it because it was still custodial. Uh, my my parents, not to knock them in any single way whatsoever, because they're probably watching, and I love you guys very, very much. Um, they are not particularly... Uh, financial slash investment savvy at all. Um, so that's all been kind of stuff that we've taken care of um, that I have either learned about or I've had adult friends that knew about and have urged me to do that. So that's been something that's always been on my mind. Uh, and that's something that I started doing in high school, actually. Um, when I was in high school, I don't know really what spurred it. I think it was... Wasn't a- it one of your teachers? Well, maybe one of my teachers or something had talked about the stock market, and I became interested in it, and I started day trading in high school. Um, it was just something that interested me, and I had um, some extra money to put into it and see what I could do with it. And I started day trading when I was a senior in high school, and I continued to do it pretty regularly for about three years. It wasn't until, I think, junior year of college where I kind of dropped off doing it so often. But um, I did good. Uh, I didn't lose any money. I actually made quite a bit of money. And a lot of it just has to do with patience. A lot of it's um, doing research, uh, knowing exactly how things work, and then um, knowing the company that you want to to invest in and, and where they're going and believing in that company and then investing and seeing what happens. And a lot of it is time. Yeah. Because sometimes you put in money and you think it's going to do something and it doesn't. When I was, I remember specifically when I was a freshman in college, I was really interested in doing stuff where the turnaround was really quick, um, where things were like jumping up and down, and I would like try to hit that low point, and then it's really, it's really a cool feeling. Like if you do something, if you put money in at a low point, and like the next day it's at a high point, and you just get out and you've made a hundred dollars, like that's a cool feeling. It's just a lot less cool when you are planning on that and then it doesn't happen and then you're stuck in that stock for like three weeks and then it finally gets back to where you're, you made money and you're like, okay, now I can get out. Um, the reason I, I stopped doing that is mostly because of time. It takes a lot of time like to actually sit there and look at stuff. So I don't do it anymore. Now we have adult investment type stuff where we don't touch it and it just does its thing. So it hopefully does its thing. Yeah, I've, I've paid attention to the to this stuff, and I'm like, you're not doing the thing you're supposed to be doing. But hopefully it'll do better in the future. Um, so yeah, that's that, that question. 
Uh, next question is from Effie Uziel, who asks, when did the vlog outro begin and who started it? Um, to be honest, I didn't know this either, but there's a really helpful wiki called Steven Wiki. Um, I actually went over to Steven Wiki. If you don't know that, about that, there's a wiki that is run by the community and it's amazing. They've done an incredible job. Um, just go, I, th I think it's stephengeorge.wikia.com or Stephen Wiki. I think it's just stephenwiki.wikia. Just type in Stephen Wiki into Google. Or it's probably in, the, oh, aren't they in the description? <laughs> They're in the description box. Um, I just typed in outro and I found the answer. Uh, the answer was vlog 491 called Nap Addict and that was March 30th, 2011. So almost five years ago is when that vlog outro actually began. Uh, and I was the one that came up with it. I don't remember why I did that. I just, I guess, wanted to try something new and I just never stopped doing it, which is true for a lot of the things on the vlog, I suppose. Uh, Mr. XRBY says, how did your parents react to you going away to college? And how did you prepare for life on your own? You take that one. Um, I just kind of moved out of my mom's. Actually, I took my vehicle to my dad's. Bye. I took his truck back to my mom's mm -hmm. because my vehicle was tiny. And I took all my clothes and all my school stuff and said bye. Mm -hmm. Quit my job. I mean, not like, bye, but like, I'm I, out. I gave my two weeks. Yeah. And um, I went to my dad's and I was there for about two weeks. And then I moved into my dorm and. And that was that. That was that. So how did your parents react? I mean, was it... Because you were the first child, because yeah. you're older than Carly, so you're the first child to leave. How did your mom and dad react? Mm -hmm. I don't really remember anything spectacular. Um, I remember my first night of college after my dad moved me in, mm -hmm. and Stephanie's parents moved her in. Um, I ended up sick from anxiety. Because mm. I was like, this is new. This is so new. And I worried myself sick that night, and I ended up calling my dad at like 2 a.m. because I was sick and throwing up, and I was like, come get me. You're only 20 minutes away, come get me. And he came and got me. <laughs> and took me back to his house, and I immediately slept and was fine. Uh, I, think, I think just hearing that is probably interesting for some of the viewers because my perception from someone who edits the vlogs and knows how you know we record things is like, you don't come across, I think, as an anxious person. You come across as a very strong-willed, chill. In, chill, in-control person. I'm not. And I think a lot of people <laughs> probably don't even know that you actually have anxiety. But, like, bad. <laughs> I mean, it's... I don't think it's as bad as you say it is. It's really not. Or, or at least it's gotten a lot better. But, yeah, Mal actually does... Is, is, a, is a fairly anxious person and gets anxious for different things. And sometimes I have to calm her down a little bit, but... Yeah, that's something you deal with a little bit. Um, as far as when I went to college, I was I was an only child, and um, my parents really missed me. And we they would call all the time, and we would do Skype. Um, I had to, I had to buy my parents a um, webcam a webcam so they could Skype. My, that was m mom my mom's insistence. She's like, I know that you can do the webcam thing. You got to get us one so we can set it up so we can, you know, talk to you and see you. So I did. Um, so I talked to them a lot. Uh, our The quarters that we had at SCAD were 10-week um, quarters. So from the time I went to SCAD, my first year, to the time I graduated, my parents always came at the middle. Always. There was not a single quarter they did not come. So every five weeks, they would come visit. Um, and it actually became kind of a big thing for my roommates and my friends, you know, Nick and, and Ian, who was also my roommate, uh, Taylor. Uh, whenever they, uh, whenever my parents would come, my parents always wanted to take everyone out to dinner. So we would, so it would be me and my roommates and we'd all go to like Golden Crow or um, what's that really good Carrie place? Hilliards. Carrie Hilliards. Oh, Carrie Hilliards, I miss you so much. We need to go to Savannah. We do, we do. Not to mention, we have some viewers um, who- Going to SCAD? Who are going to SCAD. Some of them, I, I'm i not trying to take responsibility for the reason they're at SCAD, but I think that I probably had some sort of influence there. Um, What's the name of the breakfast place? Oh God, what is Clary's. it? Clary's. 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 So uh, there's another, um, there's a sandwich place there. There's a Blick. There's a place. There's a sandwich place in Savannah where the line is out the door, and it's all students, and it's uh, 
Ah, oh, it starts with a Z. Oh my god, I can't remember it right now. But someone, some student is like, I know it, and you can let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, we should go back. What, what was the question? Where are we at? Parents going to college. Oh yeah. Or us going to college and parents. As far as how they prepared me, or how I prepared for life on my own, um, I was kind of the complete opposite of Mal. Even though I was an only child, I had no problems being away from home. Like, um, I went to college and my, my parents were like, all right, we're leaving. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> bye. And it, I mean, I I didn't want to like get away from them or anything like that. It wasn't that, it was just, I was good. You know, once, once they left, I just adapted immediately. And I had never had siblings, but suddenly I had a sibling who was the worst person on earth, Alex. So I had to like <laughs> try and adapt to him. But um, how did you adapt to like being on your own? Because I was always very independent. I mean, I had two um, after-school jobs, Carabas, and then I taught dance, and then I had dance, and I had Carabas. Sorry, Culvers. <laughs> they both start with C's. I worked at both of them. Fair. Um, I mean, I had band. I had all these things going on. I was very independent. I would drive to my dad's every other weekend, an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes by myself, sometimes with car. Mm -hmm. But like. I grew up pretty independent. I did. Okay. Like, I mean, it was, it was a situation where, um, I mean, my parents took care of a lot of stuff for me, and it, 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 my mom is that way today. I mean, you know that. Yeah. My mom is like, can I do your laundry? I know no, that you're busy. I know you're busy. You've got so many things to do. You can't record those Let's Plays when the laundry's running. I know. I've heard your washing machine. It's too loud. So, like, my mom's always been that way, which has been great. I mean, she's the most helpful person in the entire world, and I appreciate her so much. Um, so she was always doing stuff like that. But beyond that, I mean, I was always just very independent. I came up with my own ideas and did stuff, and that just followed me when I went to college. It was just like, all right, I'm on my own. I can do this. You know, when it was time to, I remember doing laundry and um, my mom had actually written me directions because I just, I had never done laundry. I know that for some kids growing up, that was just a part of chores, you know, you do laundry. I never did laundry, um, ever since I was young. Mom really wanted to do laundry. Uh, so I, she had written down a card and I remember getting into the, the, laundry the laundry room and then reading the card and being like, huh, okay, all right. Oh, okay, and then figuring it out and I remember she was like separate this 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 and this and like from the first time ever I was like I ain't doing that and then put them all together. <laughs> Nothing bad ever happened Just saying and then I washed your clothes and shrunk everything Yeah, how did you do that? We must have had just different equipment or something anyway um, the next question is from Sirius Kano or Kano to Steven are you getting gray hair? It has come to my attention that this 4K camera <laughs> is revealing too many things because this question didn't come up till we got the 4K camera. Uh, yes, yeah, I've, I've had gray hair for a long time. You Actually, you should answer this question, yeah, not me. You have. As long as I've known you? Ooh. Maybe? Yeah, probably. I mean, my, um, my pater- no, my maternal grandfather your mom's uh, dad went gr like completely gray at 18 or something like that so he was gray or white or you know went like really fast uh i've been a little more fortunate but um yeah i i i go gray i um some of it's probably genetics but then also stress yeah i mean i long time viewers know i was hospitalized for stress in late 2013 so like that's probably doing it. But fortunately, I have a much better handle on stress these days, and I'm not in danger of going to the hospital anymore for that. Um, but it still affects me in some ways, whether it's um, acne or uh, chest pains. If, if I get chest pains, that's when I'm like, all right, time to relax. Um, but certainly, probably the, the worst is, or the, the most frequent is gray hair, because I, ha I have a lot. I have a lot of gray hair. Do I have any? I've never seen gray hair on your head. I haven't either. So... I mean, it would probably blend in a bit better with mine than yours. Yeah, mine kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Not to mention that the, the the gray hairs are always like really wiry. So they're usually like meow. <laughs> anyway, uh, next question. The Zydergeist 3 says, what are your thoughts on the 2016 election? Um, we, I, I put this in here just to, I put this in here mostly so I could go, Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But um, to answer it a little more 
in act, depth. Act, yeah, to actually answer a little bit, uh, I will. Just, I will just say that it has been a very interesting election. Um, very, it's, uh, well, it's been an interesting election. It's been a fairly entertaining election, um, and it's been interesting on both sides, really. Things like, have been really shaken up on both sides. Yeah, and ob obviously, the obvious answer here is to be like, man, that Donald Trump guy, he is entertaining, and depending on who you ask, very dangerous. Um, and that's like one side of it, but even on the other side, it's been interesting because you have, you had Hillary Clinton who was like, surefire, you know, it's like, she's gonna be, like years ago, you know, yeah. oh, Hillary Clinton's gonna run, she's She's she'll be the after Obama, she'll, she'll yeah. be the the party nomination, um, and then Bernie Sanders just comes out of nowhere and is like, "Hi, I am an old man from Vermont, and let me tell you something about the one percent." So, even on that side, it's just really interesting. So to actually to to be a um, a viewer of of this election, it's been really interesting, and um, I've talked about it in vlogs. But in case you've missed them, uh, I am actually watching every single debate, and as of as of today, I've watched every single debate, even the Republican one from yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. I've watched them all. I've watched every Republican and Democratic debate, and I've never done that before. I've never watched all of them, and it's been interesting. The The question that I've had for myself is that when it's all said and done, do I wish, like, do I, do I think that I've gotten anything out of watching all of them? And that's a question I'm not actually sure I can answer. Um, like, a lot of my... A lot of my hang-ups has been that on the Republican side, there's just been too many candidates for the longest time. Um, when there's you know 12 people on stage, it's really hard to under like. First off, they can't ask them all the same question. They have to ask them different questions, and there has been so much back and forth and fighting. And I kept thinking that it would get better when there were less people on stage. But the problem is, and the thing I didn't really think about is that now we're getting closer to the end of the election. Uh, or closer to like the end of the, the primaries, nomination. yeah, the nomination. That even though there's less people on stage, now things are getting really fiery between the people. And Carson dropped out today, which yeah. means it's just four Republican uh, candidates. Four: Rubio, Cruz, Trump, Kasich. Kasich. Kasich is still in. Kasich I thought still he was in out. <laughs> so it's that that I mean those have been those have been crazy. Um, coming at this from someone who does not align with a political party and is just watching both of these debates, the Democratic ones have definitely been more um, civil, for sure. And like, that's not even like my opinion. That's kind of it's like an objective fact if you watch them. Like, there's a lot of yelling in the Republican one. Um, but even lately on the, the, the Democratic one, the the issues like that are coming up between Hillary and Bernie, they're getting some. They're getting some fire. There's definitely been some some back and forth there. Like it was, it was extremely civil at the beginning, and now it's it's not like over on the Republican side where they're just a step away from bringing paintball guns, but it's like it's starting to get some fire over there. So I've really enjoyed it. I have actually really enjoyed watching everything and keeping up with it. So that's my very in-depth thoughts. I know we never we never discuss politics on the channel, and I I like to keep it like that, just because I don't think my opinion really matters. I don't think it's in, like important. Um, people come to the channel to like watch us eat dinner and to see cats and to talk about video games, and I'd rather it stay like that. But those are my my thoughts on the election. And the last question, which is one that Mal chose, which is very surprising. Well, I regret this. Very surprising to me because um, not you're not a, the biggest fan of this artist. No, I'm not. Dyson asks, Stephen, can you do your best impersonation of Scatman John? Well, <laughs> can you? Well, Dyson, <laughs> you will enjoy it. Babu de bo babu da babu 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 de babu de bo babu da babu 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 de babu de bo babu do babu de bo babu do babu de bo babu do babu babu da. I'm calling out from Scatland. I'm calling out from Scatman's world. If you wanna break free, you better listen to me. You gotta learn how to see in your fantasy. 
Calling out from Scatland. Boom, boom, doom, boom, boom, boom. I'm calling out from Scatman's world. If you want to break free, you better listen to me. You gotta learn how to see in your fantasy. There's, there's, uh, there's verses, but I, I, I sometimes get the words mixed up, so I'll just skip those. Hopefully, that was adequate. I love Scatman John. I know you do. He's, it's, but it's, it's, it's feel good. It's feel good music is what it is. When you hear it, you just smile. You're just like, man, that's good. This makes me happy. What's the other one? Um, soup, 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 super kiri. Do, 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 blam, blam. Da, 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 you're allergic to Scatman John, it's okay. I guess we can't play him anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions that you would like to ask, you For can, the March. For the month of March, you can write them down below. Before you do, there is a link in the description that's, that shows you questions that have been asked in the past. Try not to ask a question that's been asked within like the last year or so, so just keep that in mind. Um, with all that being said. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next month for another Q&A. Scat man, they got it. <laughs>